Thank you so much. And hello, everyone. So delighted to meet you all. Uh, I am Ulrike, as Ruth said, founder of Do Good Now Global, with a vision of an empathetic world without human trafficking. If this year was your very last, how would you spend it? Maybe you would like to travel the world. Maybe you would like to spend some time with your family and friends. Maybe you would like to involve in a philanthropic projects and make a change. I decided I wanted it all now. So through the power of curiosity, which is one of my core values, I took my family and asked them, do you want to come on an adventure? So we traveled the world trying to do something in something good in every place that we came to. And what happened was that whether we were in Thailand working after the tsunami disaster, or if we found ourselves in Costa Rica working for women empowerment, or if we traveled to Nepal trying to do something against child trafficking, or if we just were on vacation in Dubai, we found that we are part of the demand for human trafficking. And I think there are, there are many ways to make a change, but to really make a true change, you need to do a change within and then make an outer change. At least it was like that for me, because who am I really to speak about human trafficking for sexual purposes? I have never been raped, never been in an abusive relationship. I've never been extremely poor and I've never been addicted to drugs. So who am I speaking about this? And I would like to turn it over that, who am I not to do anything about this when I have the possibility? So what started as a family adventure ended up in a social initiative against human trafficking for a more empathetic world. Because right now, in this very moment, as we're sitting here, trucks and buses and trains are crossing the border from Nepal to India. The cargo is children many times, about to be sold to Brussels in, in the red light districts. Right now, as we're sitting here, uh, a mother receives $200 for her son or her daughter in the belief that, belief that the child will bring an income to the family and work abroad. The truth is probably they will never meet again. Right now, as we are meeting today, here in Stockholm, a few hundred meters away, there are apartments where people are being raped and people who actually are entering these apartments buying sex. Or I would like to rephrase that. They are walking in the apartments raping because it's not on equal terms. So again, who am I to speak about this? I would like to share a story because once in an airport, I was people watching and my eyes fell on a couple. They were deeply in love. And I thought that if everyone felt, everyone in the world felt like they are feeling right now, we wouldn't have that feeling of scarcity or products or services or whatever we would be totally satisfied because if they didn't find anything to eat 
they wouldn't mind because they had each other. So since I am an investor, I have been thinking a lot about the economics behind scarcity and demand and supply and so forth. So what drives our demand? What are we lacking? And I'm thinking often of the predators uh, who prey on the vulnerable. What are they lacking? What are they missing out of in life? Are they feeling shame? Are they feeling guilt? What do they need? So one of our project is one of our projects is to educate and ask young boys. Do you have everything that you like? What, what do you want to be when you grow old? What, do you, what are your feelings? Express your feelings and create a nice environment because I think it starts there. So we have, we have a huge responsibility. And I also think that we talk a lot of human rights. We have the right to do this and that. But it's time that we talk about human responsibilities and corporate responsibilities. Like you said, Danny, I couldn't agree more. We have to understand that we are part of the demand for human trafficking if we are staying at a hotel built of, uh, by slaves. We need to ask the question, who built this fancy hotel? Who is cleaning in this hotel? What are their rights? We, we have to ask the company where we buy our clothes, which is your code of conduct. Do you have child labor in your supply chain? We have to understand that every choice we make, we can make a difference. And I also have been dwelling uh, very much about how I want to use my voice because I have been very shy in my life. And I had a very weak fifth chakra, the communication chakra, the energy center from where you can speak the truth and you can communicate. So I decided when I have a voice, who am I not to use it for those who cannot speak right now? So I have decided that I will use part of my voice for the rest of my life to speak for those who cannot. And like you said, Danny, I really, really agree that you cannot save anyone, maybe small children, but when you, when you think you save someone, you are as saved by that person. It's an interaction. And so much I have learned from all the women, all the men, all the children that I met. They have given me so much, so much vulnerability and the access to my own vulnerability, the access to my own shame, the access to my own guilt. And I think it's through that that you grow. So I really do hope that when I'm hopefully 99 or so, my very last days, I will be able to say to myself, I tried the very best. And I hope that people around me would say about me that she really tried the very best. Thank you so much for listening and for having me today.